Okay, we're into Hopscotch Lesson 2. We're going to leave a trail behind our character. In our last lesson, if you've missed it, jump on YouTube and have a look at it. We made our octopus go up, down, left and right by tilting the iPad. Really easy to do, quick and easy. And we use the menu on the left-hand side of motion. I'm actually going to shut that, and this time we're going to ask our octopus to leave a trail behind him when he moves. So I'm going to tap on my lines. I always get with the kids to shut down the code that they're not using, just so it really... Um, uh, gets it nice and clear in their head what they're doing. And this time, when I tilt the iPad left, I'm going to leave that there, but I'm going to bring over um, Lever Trail, and I'm going to make sure that he still moves. I'm going to drag over Set My Line Color, and I'll click on that and make it green. And then I'll also set the line width and I just drag it over and set it at, say, I'm going to set it at 20 to see how big that is. So let's have a look at our code and see what we want our octopus to do. We want him to move when I tilt the iPad left to leave a trail, green color, um, and a reasonably thick color. So let's press a play. Um, remember, we always test our code when we put something in. Don't move on to the next code. Encourage your kids to stop, check before you move on. Press play. Now when I go left, there's the code. When he goes right, he doesn't actually leave it. So once again, left he does, right he doesn't. So now I'm gonna copy that code for each one, leave a trail, move my change, set my line. Now my color could be a little bit different this time. Let's set it to uh, yellow and set the line width to the same. Let's set it as 20, I think it was. Um, let's test that code. Up, down, left and right. Now it's yellow. When it goes over, it changes color. Up, down, left and right. Um, let's do the same with the up and down. Whoops. Uh, leave a trail. Move that in. You can see how quick and easy it is. Set the width. We'll make that 20 as well. Um, and let's do it for our iPad up as well. So every time my character moves now, he's going to leave a color. I'll just change that color to blue, set a line width, and it should make a line wherever I go. So now I've got my octopus up, down, left, and right, making different colors in the codes. Um, you can see that I haven't set my width properly on one of them, so I need to change that. But basically, we've got this fantastic little movement with leaving a trail on each one, which is pretty cool. I encourage my kids to make a game out of that now. Let's see how many perfect squares you could make in 30 seconds. So we are doing code and we're teaching our kids to code, but we're also talking about game simulations and, and what makes a game and what's a challenge and what's not challenging and what's doable. Always get your kids to swap their iPads with someone else as well. Um, that encourages that collaboration and that talking. Uh, in my classroom, I've got a rule that says three before me and they must ask three other kids, um, students, um, questions um, before they come to me because it's important that they realise that um, I am not uh, Mr Fixit. It's important that they are problem solvers um, and I don't want them seeing me as someone that fixes their work and helps them with their coding in that way. best way I can help my students to code is to encourage them to be self-learners, um, to trial and error, and to do all those things that we know and risk take, all those things we know are good things, qualities that our students have. Paul Hamilton here signing off. Next one, we'll look at adding a character and looking at collisions.